Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Coke coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video and I have a deck to share with you guys today. One that I personally use to climb from gold to platinum, holding about an 82% win rate with a pretty small sample size, but not one to overlook. We did go 12 and 1, so the deck definitely has potential and I hope to use it to climb from uh, platinum to diamond. Now, as you can see here, we have the overgrown snap vine, which is the highlight and the key card in this deck, hence why we call it the Snapvine mid-range deck. But in terms of it being a mid-range deck, you probably you could probably question that because with the play style is kind of interesting. It it's kind of got aggressive tools, but we mainly just stall out until we get the Snapvine and then play it alongside some interesting combos. Like the main number one powerful play you make with this deck is by holding some spell mana, making it to turn seven. Then you play Snap uh, Snapvine, sorry, alongside Haunted Relic to produce uh, four of these bad boys. And then that's that's insane value. It's a pretty crazy tool that can actually turn your deck into this, this insane amount of um, value generation while kind of still abusing this early game board control. So it's really cool like that. Anyway, we should go take a look at the deck list, I think. But before we jump over, I would just like to add, uh, if you are new here, consider subscribing. We are posting Runeterra content pretty regularly. I like to showcase decks and then go into detail and play some games with them. Just before we uh, get into the deck list once again, I would like to add, right, if there's any way we can possibly get a way to track stats of uh, separate decks, not just the regions themselves, that would be um, very helpful. And, you know, it will give players an opportunity to showcase the deck a little bit more. Just having a way to just uh, really get stats for separate decks would be very very helpful you probably won't see this though so that's okay anyway uh from, we're gonna go from the bottom to the top here i think it's a better way of explaining the deck because it's gonna make a lot more sense in terms of like why we run cards if we go the other way so overgrown snapvine is obviously the top end of this deck we have a single copy of vengeance we have a single copy of endure now i would like to add that endure is a card that i've been heavily considering changing it depends what how the meta turns out because I find myself in some situations where um, I have snap vines on board and obviously like if you play Endure it's going to get killed and turned to a snap vine so that's not very powerful but I thought that because we have so much token generation that the Endure might have some relevancy and it has in a couple of games of being able to tempo it out on turn 6 being at 8-8 eight, eight, and that's pretty crazy still but this is uh, subject to change so be sure to check back regularly in case the uh, list has changed Withering Whale, pretty much just anti-aggro, just helps us to like trade up or trade down with our tokens. And it can be really helpful to sustain, really helpful for sustain. I spawned Legacy, more recent addition as I was playing and playing, I realized this card had a lot more potential, mainly because we can A, play it alongside the spiders to find some early game value, or B, play it alongside the snap vine so it's kind of it synergizes really well but we're only going to have two copies of it because uh three is probably a bit overkill and you want to have two just in case you have high chances of finding it but during it can sometimes be really awkward to play especially on the spiders early because chances are they'll probably figure out a way to deal with it but i spawn legacy definitely can do some pretty crazy highlights alongside snap vine Grasp the Undying, similar reasons to Withering Whale. Um, a lot of people playing uh, Burn Aggro, which has a lot of units that are very susceptible to Grasp of the Undying. A big note would be against Draven. This card is just nuts. So I like uh, Grasp of the Undying at the moment. It's a three of pretty much like it's all about the life still, and everyone's playing Burn. So these two cards, Withering Whale, Grasp of the Undying, I like them as three ofs. Broad Awakening is going to be a thrill for sure. This has huge synergy alongside Snapvine as well as the early game. Uh, Wraith Caller, this is a three of mainly because we're heavy, heavy um, in the Shadow Wilds. So having this as a three of just, it kind of makes sense. And there's not many other four drops really that are achieving the same goal as Wraith Caller. Plus if we are tempoing out, because you can sometimes have some pretty, pretty nuts opening hands. Playing this on curve can sometimes help you fight for the board and just keep push, uh, putting a lot of pressure on your opponent. One of the more interesting cards in this deck is definitely going to be the Blight of the Caretaker. This has been finding me crazy value. Like with when you, it, it fits this deck very nicely because we already have so many tokens. A lot of this deck is focused purely on tokens. So this is another token generator. Obviously you can play it alongside Snapvine to get three tokens, which is pretty crazy. But sometimes in the early game, 
You can sacrifice one of your cheap spiders to honestly pull out these challenging saplings to deal with some awkward minions that you want to go off the field, especially elusive. So this card definitely finds its home here. Um, outside of this deck, I probably wouldn't say this card's very powerful, and this card could even change depending on what the meta looks like. So this would be one of the other cards alongside Endure that might be changed. And also saying that Wraith Caller is another opportunity for some tweaking. But for now, this is a list I'm pretty comfortable with. Two Vile Feasts. Um, I always find three Vile Feasts to be kind of weak, especially if you draw them too early. So two Vile Feasts is nice. It gives you a high chance of finding it in the early game, and that's where you mainly want it. Haunted Relic's gonna be a three of. This is gonna be a huge generation tool alongside um, Snapvine. So I really like it. it has its home here um, outside of that. This card is not usually seen as a three of, but I like it in this situation. A Glimpse Beyond currently a two of. This is probably one of the cards that we might consider bumping up to three because card draw is kind of low, but you've got plenty of time to draw into your snap vine on curve. So we'll keep it as a two of just for now because you don't always just want to be glimpsing for your card draw. Sometimes Glimpse is more powerful when you find it later in the game when it has more relevancy. And because uh, during the early game, you pretty much want to be fighting for the board, especially against aggro. Glimpse is good for like denying some value, but like without... Ezreal hanging out all the time and stuff now. It just kind of finds value in niche scenarios. So I like it as a two of. It kind of helps, like even if you just find one and get that card draw, it helps you get closer to your snap bind. That's where it's most relevant. At least as a three of, this card's pretty powerful in Shadow Wilds in general. And of course we're gonna run it if we're running a token kind of deck. Uh, we have Omen Hawk as a uh, two of in this deck. I personally find the Omen Hawk, I like it better as a two of, mainly because uh, we do want to find this Pretty much in the opening hands where it's most powerful. I don't want to draw into too many Omen Hawks as the game goes on. I'd rather find stuff that synergizes with, with uh, synergizes with a snap bind more. And that's its powerful effect pretty much when you find it in the opening hand. And especially against board centric decks, other aggro decks, that's where Omen Hawk really shines. And I don't want to draw into too many times. Towards the end, I want to find stuff that is more synergistic with snap bind itself. So we'll keep it as a two off. We are in for jaw. The card is very powerful. Uh, but it's most powerful when you find it in the opening hand. Hapless Aristocrat synergizes very well with Snapvine. Uh, you play it and then it kills the Aristocrat, kills the Spider, and you've got two, four, threes. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Another good one drop to find early to help fight for the board. Uh, Crawling Sensation will be a three of. Now these are Aristocrat and Crawling Sensations. These are kind of like cards that could be tweaked a little bit. It's a little bit heavy on the one drops in this deck where we find most value towards the end and we can sometimes run out of gas but when all the when all the cards line up they can actually be very powerful together so we're going to have three and three these could be subject to change but crawling sensation is definitely very powerful in the right scenario especially against aggro getting more tokens is very helpful for you know saving your face from dying especially against plunder cards so we like this we like the how it is now so that's an overlook of the deck at the moment, I'm pretty comfortable with it, uh, but the main, probably the main card that we'll consider changing is Endua. Probably going to chuck in like a Ruination or something along those lines, or another copy of Vengeance. Pretty much another heavy, expensive card to replace it. Uh, Ruination will be the go-to option if uh, we start to see lots of powerful mid-range decks, and then probably another Vengeance for along the line, along the same reasons. But it depends how fast the games are going. Uh, most of the time, we are sustaining pretty well, so Ruination is probably not the worst fit in this deck. But you can also definitely uh, argue that two copies of Vengeance might be more consistent. Uh, so let's go jump into the games, guys. We've got a fair bit here, a fair bit of gameplay. Hopefully it's enough to really showcase what the deck can do. And then you can hopefully absorb the information. And then if you see this deck on ladder, I do apologize. <laughs> you have a fantastic day. Keep the one lonely aristocrat. So are you able to target their monsters or they have to select a defend? No, you never target their monsters unless you have a certain effects. So when you're attacking, you just swing and then they choose how they want to react. It's very similar to magic in terms of combat mechanics. But if they have a card that says challenger, that's the only way that you can kind of get around that mechanic. Because when a unit has challenger, they can basically choose who they want to attack into. Hence, they challenge them and they rip them towards them.
I do like that too. I like that the difference between Hearthstone and this is that there's a lot more a lot more plays. There's like a lot more times. Mac Twister used modified auto mod properties. I have no idea what that means, but have fun with that. I think I just ping the ping the tracker. Keep the the Marcian board on the, in check, and play around allegiance cards. Sure. So we've got a pretty good turn four play, so I'll just chill and float the mana. And every time you play a card, Rowan, your opponent could play a card. So now he has a he has a time to react. That's actually an insane card. Like these trades now feel like poop. This trade feels okay and this feels okay, but we don't swing with this. Unless it's a burst. Yes, unless they have burst spells. There's three kinds of spells, Rowan, Nova. Three types of spells that all have different reaction techniques. It's like a magic version of Hearthstone. That's probably one of the most best ways I can put it. I think we just we're just chilling here. He's running the badger. That's kind of interesting. Am I supposed to play a crawling sensation here? It sets up more chump blockers, but outside of that, they're not as strong. Later, Faint. Thank you for coming in today. Have a great day. I guess the coin cessation is okay. It gives us more units to keep on the board. Okay. See what he does. Strength and grace. Challenger. Let's attempt to grasp the war chiefs. Gets way too good of a value. So if I can deny that value, I will take it. I just don't want him to challenge the Wraith Caller. It's like a pretty good trade. I'll let, him, I'll let him invest some resources and outplay the grass for sure. I wouldn't be surprised to see him. Okay, that's a really weird play. I'm gonna block the bear. Float some mana. I can play the caretaker just to get some challenges on the field. Sure, let's do it. How big are his units? Everyone we'll do this. He hasn't got enough mana for that. That puts up a good blocker against the least though. Come closer. So I can play this turn a little bit differently. Fight. I can actually challenge the 3-3. Three -three. The guru follows. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Hush now. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Laurent Perrier have a trade here. This is my opponent. This can't be correct. Single combat could be a play. This will not 
Yeah, you, you trade into the spider 100%. Which makes me wonder if it was worth playing um Aristocrat. No, not my spiders. Now nah, we have to save Aristocrat for some sort of refill with Snapvine. Us. Okay, he's gonna try and set up some sort of double sentinel single combat. Okay. I don't know if I want to draw cards there. I think I'll just get rid of the three one on the field. Could have maybe glimpsed now. We'll just pass. I need to make sure I guarantee the one snap bind goes off. So in doing that, I pretty much chill this turn. We just chill this turn. So you might have like... We just have to play it. We have to play it, even if it's another single combat. So this at least guarantees us to snap vine, which is really strong. Yeah, all right. Here's where we just take over the game, right? I'd be so happy if Riot buff snap by into a 4-3. Be careful there, 10. You're, you're treading on very thin water. Very thin water. <laughs> it already feels strong. Why do we want to give it more power? Swing all of them? The spinal was spawned. It's true. But I think I have to swing with them last so that at least goes first. This seems really risky, but we have the Withering Whale to fix up any problems, so I don't mind it. We shouldn't play too passive with the snap vines. We already learned our lesson. We already learned our lesson for sure. Feeling pretty Withering Whale, hey. Feeling like Withering Whale is just a decent card right about now. Stops this from happening. Kills this, possibly. Yeah, deny. Sure. Let's, just, uh, let's uh, glimpse here. Hey, we'll glimpse this. We'll glimpse here at least. Putting two, bringing this down to two HP is like super irrelevant. The spooky thing now is that he's got a pretty nutty Portamasia, which requires him to play slowly though. So that's okay. Literally insane amount of refill. <laughs> Dude, these cards are insane. He just denied that too. So that's actually probably in the end, good for us. Wow. That's actually insane. So it's probably Broad Awakening.
didn't, I didn't see that coming at all. That was an insane play. Why is that card there? For this matchup, clearly. <laughs> okay, I guess how much damage are we willing to tank? I think I'm willing to tank that much. We just, we just, we didn't tank any damage and we kill this. I use a broad awakening here because it's cheaper and there's more damage on the units if that becomes relevant at all. At least he has no mana to rally against me because that'd be kind of spooky. I need him to have no answer here. See on combat and I'm bummed. Making the dead. Okay. Synergizes really well with Coin Sensation as well. Show them what we're made of. Okay, I know that he can't outplay open attacks here. Everything on his board kills stuff on my board. But it doesn't make any logical sense to not swing with everything. Except for one. Because we can Haunted Velik for the refill. So this just feels correct. Swing with all but one. Because he can't ignore it completely. So the Swiftwing ch Lancer probably challenges. He takes a value block here. Warned you. Fuck, he's taking a lot of blocks here. I'm not sure if he's supposed to block with the swift foot, honestly. So now everything's just outside of range of uh for Demacia value, which is kind of really tough. There's one card that could actually get us into a really cool situation, and that's Iceborne Legacy. Demacia shall prevail. We're pretty free just to drop one of the snap finds from hand. It's clearly he's going to play. Yeah, this is clear. So we don't really want to tank any damage. Is there a reason to go down to... I don't think so. This is a really intense match. Feels like a pretty good open attack. We got some snap by and broad awakening refills. Dude, the, the, the amount of stuff that we're generating is just fucking insane. One card that kind of gets really strong here is deny. Dude, I've seen so many snap finds this game. It looks like the deck breaks the game, who ain't Minerva. It's got some semi semi breaking mechanics. Now I wonder if I'm supposed to play this next snap find. Nah man, it's completely legal. Oh dude, this is what we've been trying to find. Oh, oh, dude. Yeah. 
Yes! Oh, dude, that's game over. That's a game over right there, dude. Dude, this is fucking insane. <laughs> oh, man, that's strong. Now we're feeling really strong. Holy shit. I guess he needs ruination at this point. I guess I hold back this for any crazy reason that there's a card I'm not aware of. This helps him. Hmm. We're chilling. Let's see if it puts up any barrier cards. I don't think we play the Withering Whale here. Our Lord and Savior, Green Eyes, Black Dragon. That's cute. Low key, that was pretty cool. Maybe we're supposed to play our snap by now. He's forced to block everything you do right now. Yeah, pretty much. He's on 3 HP. Like, this is. It looks like we're in a great spot. I'm just worried about cards. Like that. I can I can get around this. I can get around this. Come closer. We have the Withering Whale. I demand satisfaction. Oh yeah, you're right. This makes more sense. I guess we're not tanking that. Are we tanking nine? I think we're tanking nine. I need to keep these for the open attack. I don't think he has options to actually kill me. So it's fine. No. Lucian. This should honestly be game over on the open attack. So this, something like this. We could use a bite. It's over. You dare. Sort of, maybe. Because this snap line doesn't get to attack. And doors a 48, 48 that we're just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how well this is fitting in my deck at the moment, but damn boy, look at the size of that. Holy shit. Fuck, what a blowout. It's hella busted. Stand alone. Awesome. This is probably a matchup that we're going to get shot on. Okay, this is good. We can play a bunch of spiders, they'll help us out a lot. He's on attacking odds, which kind of stinks. But at least we get a pretty free Elise. If he is standalone, I'm assuming that he is. Like those color combinations scream standalone. Is he actually considering playing something? Because that's going to be a mistake. Hush now. For a moment he thought, maybe. Or maybe he was just AFK for a sec. Green Glade. So do the boards come with their own music? Yeah, apparently they do. I guess we just play Omen Hawk. Let's move. 
We'll float some mana. We need to make sure he's out of ranges. Feeling like an open attack. Toxic. Let's ice spawn legacy. <sighs> Fuck man, bro. It doesn't it doesn't get as much value. Ice spawn? Yeah. It's gonna be the play though. It's just gotta be the play. And then we'll try and kill him. Coming back into our turn. I'm just dying to elusive units. They'll never see me coming. Okay, he has an answer for this. Oh, we are so fucking lucky that went through. They cannot hide. I will play my part. I've had no units die yet. Skitter out from the darkness. This is a 3 3, isn't it? That's good. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. I'll take it. <clears throat> That's an expensive hand. I'm thinking about cutting a door, though, man. What's your rank? Gold one. It was a rank reset recently. So I went back from diamond to gold. When the new expansion hit. If we win this, we'll be plat. That egg. Did it move? Stack's feeling good. It's a weird rank to be calling it out, but there's other players who had their ranks reset too. Who have gone back a fair bit. Probably the more semi-casual players, but... So barrier is pretty strong here. But it almost just feels more productive to play uh, Elise, or I could Vile Feasters to play around barrier. I guess if he plays the barrier, I just don't attack. War Chiefs, that's, that's dealable. Is there any reason to swing with this? Puts this at 2, two HP. It's fine. Chip damage is relevant. It all adds up. Especially when I'm running cards like Caretaker. It changes the mentality I have towards certain players. So like swinging with the aristocrat here. Does this still make sense though? Because he at least spawns Spiderling. So he can't block that wide. I just, I think it just makes sense to swing with everything, in general. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna Vile Feast here, correct? I believe he's trying to set up a play. Actually, Vile Feast does not get anything done. Doesn't change anything. Changes this, though. Changes the way we, re we react to this play. This is that value block he took before. A tribute to the spider god. Eyes big. Can't say it wasn't worth it. Okay. We want to play coin cessation here. I don't think we want to flow mana when we plan on playing Wraith Call next turn. We have no cheap plays anyway. It just makes more sense to use a coin cessation now to stay wide on the board. Plays into make it rain. Plunder. What is that set up? Is there a plunder card I'm missing here? Monkey. The 
Yosha and the Whispers are secrets. What's this swing play into? Actually, no. We block. We trade. If we kill the... This... If this trades into the Wraith Caller, I think that's a fair block. What I'd be more surprised to see is, yeah. No, you wouldn't. You'd never block like that. It's a mistake written all over it. I think Grasp grass the Undying is going to be quite important in this matchup, the way we use it. How the monkey. So what I can do here is let him Neither the flames nor the depths can claim me. When I summon when I'm summoned summon a powder keg, when you've damaged the enemy nexus in five rounds this game. You can't swing with the GP. This is our way. Do I block this with Wraith Caller? We block this with Wraith Caller. Return me to the sea. Uh, we let the attack go through first, so we can get more healing from Grasp. Very cool. At least GP's off the field. He played that pretty um, tempo-y, so he might have another one. What does a VIP badge do, by the way? It means you're not restricted by adverts. And or slow chat. It means you get a cool symbol. Look at the fucking powder kick off the field. Could have swung four damage face. But that's if that feels okay. Okay. Weird. Thorny Toad's a really good anti aggro card. It found you. Grass is also a really good card in general. We don't want to deal with misfortune at all. We've had perfect dances here. Gotta respect the snap vine. That's it. I've whipped up something special. So in between these two cards, it's probably Wraith Caller. Wraith Caller finds more value prior to the snap vine. I rarely forget and never forgive. So I respect Okay. You.
Should have been the other way, I think. That's an insane top deck. What do you mean? You could have let two of them survive. Uh, Miss Wraith only had three attack though. I would have rather I would have rather just clear the one four toad. Honestly. So I need to snap vine to not get killed by something. I think I'm honestly just better off playing uh, withering whale here and chilling with my snap vine. There's answers. There is answers. So I'm not sure. I need to bring up this deck list. Getting rid of that, like doing that, just feels just as strong. Because what we can do is we can let him run out of um, mana next turn. And we're safe to play Snapbind at that point. Like, I don't think he's going to have heavy cards in the deck. I think GP is the finisher. So we just have to chill. We just have to like not get threatened by certain cards he puts down. And just let him run out of the gas. This deck is starting to feel very stolly now. Okay, I'm not threatened yet. I'm really not threatened. Rex start is also a threat. He has no Rex now, true. He might be looking for a plunder effect. I feel fine just blocking this. I think he's trying to activate some sort of plunder. I guess I have to play it. I can't sit back. That looks threatening. I can beat the shoot. Relic goes off. No answer, you got one card in hand. There we go. Pretty much, I feel so like, once the snap fine goes off like that, oh man. Why is this guy rallying? He's panicking. He didn't know that I had the snap vine or the cards to react. It was pretty much a correct play there. He was in a bad spot. So maybe if he rallies, I don't know, he can attack again, but maybe he's meant to hold on to it. That's platinum by the way, guys. Uh, straight up aggro. These two cards feel really good on double float. Bile feast. Maybe I shouldn't have kept both of them. My hand was just screaming like, hold on to these cards. They're going to help you against this guy. Let's just dodge the uh, rear guard and I'll be feeling okay. At least we're on attacking uh, odds. Helps us out a lot. Shame we had no one drop. Process bet. Okay. I think it's just Alicia. And we blocked the uh, Boom Kuruki. It will all be over soon. Time to go. <sighs> so we open attack. Hush now. We have options if he blocks you. Smart not to block there. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, let's do this. I guess when getting the fierce one with the you know off the board pretty much done has some damage as well. Your hurry. 
This feels like a pretty good Withering Whale, actually. That's a good way to play. I mean, he needs a uh, Blood Transfusion. Works out pretty good for him. Yes, it's gonna be broad awakening. This card's nuts right now. Of course I'm ready. We still attack. So I'm guessing he really needed to save Crimson. I guess so. I'm not blocking here. Okay, he might maybe he has a no. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing there. That's weird. Come here, darling. Let's see. Has transfusion. Okay, no. I guess Crimson just goes down like a sack of shit anyway. I think what was more important in that turn that he took was getting rid of the uh, lease. Let's make it deep. That's not so good on a no defense. Uh, Broad Awakening just gets pretty nuts here. It looks bad. It does look pretty bad. But it means I can like trade into Boom Crew Wookie. Just decimating. So I need to keep mana for Withering Whale. We're sitting on nine, so I can't really play Iceborne Legacy. Probably just... We have nine, nine plus four. Am I counting that right? I am counting that right. I'll play Wraith Caller here. We could have lethal damage. Iceborne could have been lethal. Sort of. Not as much. I need to go wider against them right now. So we're just withering whale. He's not playing anything from hand. His big brain if he allows this withering whale to go through. And he already had like something to play from hand. It's over. I didn't get the showcase snap vine. This is a matchup that probably requires a bit more thinking. Maybe we'll keep the caretaker. It could have some value that I'm not I'm missing out on. Okay. Is there a way you can get a trample effect onto Undua? Yeah, it actually already has trample. It has overwhelm. Which makes that card really nuts. Overwhelm is the uh, magic's, version of ma uh, magic's version of trample. We can flip Elise. Let's 
Sort of. So young. It's a sort of flip. It's a really aggressive flipping of Elise. That's what it is, though. It's a very aggressive flip of Elise. No one. No one else should know about this deck. No one. Nah, dude. We can't be like that. We get semi value there. Do I just attempt to Iceborne Legacy? I can't. I really just feel like I should. Ah, oh, man. It's, it's, there's an there's X amount of cards that get the job done here. X amount of cards. Let's close my eyes here. Make it rain. 100% destroys this play. Because here's three random enemies. So I guess we open attack. I'll see what he does here. I'll write my own story. Okay. Am I being too passive by playing around Make It Rain? I don't think so. I think that's too passive. So all you have to do with Endura is get it to high and you can one hit. Yes, you can one hit. There's also a spell card that reads, destroy a friendly minion, deal its damage to the enemy. Nexus. Okay. For the glory of Damasia. Okay. Really liking the Iceborne Legacy in this deck. These feel clunky now though. We're not attacking here. These are feeling super clunky now that we've buffed up the spiders though. There may be reasons to actually still kill one of the spiders. Depending on what he does here. I think I'll do it. It ends up being more stats in terms of if, if we want to attack right now. Seems kind of bad, but we'll see how we go. I pretty much get to like swing into the Fleetwood Tracker for free and swing a trade into here. Where I was already considering open attacking anyway. So this might turn out okay for us. Plus lines up grass with the Undying into here and we still have two units on board. Does he have a way of, um... If I just Withering Whale, that feels pretty strong. It means one of these probably dies. You didn't open attack? I did not open attack. I had, a uh, at the start of my turn, I had two through three spiders, which I chose to pass. I considered open attacking to push three and trade into the Badger. There's all, there's all these little lines that could have turned out differently. A long path to get here. Okay, this feels really aristocratic. Where are you? So obviously now this this ping that we did here looks really bad. But why you put those two on the back line? 
True. That was a misplay. I didn't even think about it. That would have been free damage. Um, yeah, we misplayed that turn. So now they make up for it. Hopefully we can get this grass to go off. <laughs> if this grass wasn't work... I could have waited, actually. Now I'm misplaying a lot. Dude, I'm making some weird plays. <laughs> Okay, hopefully no single combat. Okay, we've gotten our first snap binding off. Yeah, that was a mistake, 10. I didn't even, like, I don't know what my brain was thinking then. Maybe I'm hitting my limits for the day. I'm probably hitting my limits for the day. I'm scared, um... I might lose if I don't block, but I'm scared for single combat. I haven't been keeping track of his hand. So I guess in terms for safety, I just do this. The Vile Feast would hopefully still proc first to get me a, uh... Snap fine. But if it still works out, I'm pretty sure, no matter what, it still works out. Single combat wouldn't have made a difference there. Because the Vile Feast would have procced before the attacks go through anyway. So that was fine. We can pass now. We're in a pretty commanding spot. Okay, now I've gotta play this. We should just block everything. What is our value him? He's empty hand. We're looking pretty strong now. Yeah, opposite we display broad awakening. An Iceborne legacy does fit pretty well into this deck. It's very flexible in terms of the way you can use it either with spiders or with the snap vine. So that's why Iceborne Legacy does feel very, like, synergistic. One one drop's enough. I think Omen Hawk's the one drop we keep. I also need to change my channel points. I forgot all about that. I realized I can't have a 1v1 because I haven't got an EU server so it wouldn't be fair for you I realize 10 because I haven't got a server on EU I cannot do the 1v1 I didn't even think about that when I first did it I need to get an EU account but I'm not sure how to set it up I must have made a mistake when I made those extra accounts King Cheesy Sauce is in a normal game what's going on there? Normal. At least. If he's playing a standalone Zed, isn't it the case that you never play that on turn one? Hush now.
Testing, fair enough. Elise is just better than Callista, isn't she? Yeah, I, I thought about testing out Callista, but then it, it went kind of hand in hand with my the slow play. I wasn't as big a fan. I can flip Elise here. Weak will. That's pretty relevant. I have many faces. Sucks that this got the buff. Please, I have connections. Single combat could actually stop him from flipping Elise. It also means that Zed would die. You can single combat with the blade scout against one of the singleton spiders, but that feels kind of weak. I have some funny ways. Actually, the bracket attack, the, sa the saplings are no joke. The challenger is really relevant. I open up the creator dashboard for a sec. Did he do something? Purify. That's a heads up play. Immunity. I can have 20 VIPs. That's great. Almost died to a disconnect on RS. So no time to chill back a bit. <laughs> so time to chill back a bit. All right. RuneScape that is. All right, 10. Wait, was that you? Wait, was that you just did, by the way? That was me, I just did that. Yes. I could do some really wacky plays here with Caretaker to try and flip Elise. Like, super wacky plays. I'll be honest, where did the spider go? He um purified the aristocrat, which is why I lost my spider. If that's what we're referring to. They would fall by my blade. Stay away from my pets. Stay away from my pets. There you are. Alright, check this out. He's got one mana, so he's obviously gonna have like fucking something. This just helps deny him from interacting with Elise. So we can potentially flip. This blighted is good. Yeah, dude, it's, put, it's putting in work in scenarios. Outside of the fact that it just provides multiple, multiple units. For uh, the one and only Snapvine. In, those, in that situation where I was on the defense, sort of, it was quite helpful as well. Guys, no joke. Grants are tough. Let me change into something more. It's great that we flipped the list, but I realize now it's just gonna die anyway. Unless. I just gotta go for the grasp here, right? Stand alone. Nothing to hold me back. So if he has Ilix, he's not even in that, he's not even... This has to work. I need this to work. Radiant Strike gets him out of this. Oh, we're so lucky that went through. This puts us in a pretty good open attack. Yeah, he's got two cards in hand. I'm probably going to play uh, Broad Awakening here. If he's playing standalone, he played it really wacky. So I'm only assuming that he draw really poorly. We lose one spider, that's fine. 
Okay. We're still open attacking. Tough. Okay. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling really confident right about now. But I feel like we're just winning with spiders. <laughs> okay, that's some semi refill. Uh, we'll play door and door here. Strike quickly, strike deftly. Oh go. Okay, so he's got limited options here. Cards I'd be concerned about is like single combats for him trying to win the game with Fiora. Or will of Ionia. If he has if he has these certain options, then the vengeance just gets strong. I could take some I could take some damage here. I always block the infuriel. It's usually more relevant in case he purifies it. I have no equal. Okay. So we just swing with um. Actually, limited options for him. I think we'll play Haunted Relic. I can I can just go super wide against him. And if he wills, I can replay Endure. It's over. There were so many ways to pile up that turn, but we would have guaranteed a victory. 